The next wave that was released was the All Stars 2. And this one had uh, Attila and Atlas the Conqueror, who were from Mythic Legions 1.0. And these are very highly sought after characters. It's almost like, you know, getting, if you were collecting Transformers, it would be like getting Optimus Prime. Like, these guys are the main good guys. And if you're collecting Mythic Legions and you don't have an Atlas the Conqueror or an Attila, you're probably feeling like you're missing something. There's tons of other great characters to have. And I'm not saying you have to have those figures for your collection to be complete. But I know me personally, I didn't even start collecting this line until I got Attila and Atlas. Like, out of the first three or four figures I got, I bought those two. But I'm so happy to have them because I feel like I can build my Mythic Legions collection because I have some of the main iconic characters. Next, we have three waves. So you got Soul Spiller, Siege at Bjorngar, and Wasteland. And again, you'll notice that each of these waves were a lot smaller as far as the amount of figures than like Advent of Decay or Mythic Legions 1.0. I mean, they, they obviously realized that coming out with 40 something figures in a wave was just too much strain on the consumer. It just was too much. Um, so in the first wave here, this uh, Soul Spiller wave. Now here we have a couple more Master of the Universe Classics tributes. You have Kauros and you have Melina which are basically Battle Cat and Evil Lynn. Um, and then you also had, and this one is a very sought after figure, the Ice Troll. Then you had the Siege at Bjorngar, and this is where they started introducing these ogre sized figures. So these nine to 10 inch or so huge figures that they're not, you know, as bulky and, and unwieldy as the trolls. They're more shaped like regular people, but just in much, much bigger proportions. Uh, both are the Tower, Kurzog, and the Ogre Legion, Legion Builder were released in that wave. And then you also had the Wasteland wave, which featured another ogre called Archimedes, which was basically an ogre, but he's a cyclops. And then you also had two more of the Masters of the Universe tribute characters, Cronaw and Purple, Trapjaw and Panther. All right, so that brings us to the last uh, couple of waves, the, the last two new waves. You have the Aerithyr wave, and then we have All-Stars 3. Aerithyr wave, introduces mounts to mythic legions up until this point we've had zero mounts no horses no griffins no vehicles nothing there's been only figures and weapons to this point but now they're introducing horses so we have a regular horse called Baileus, and then we have aethon it's erethir's personal demon horned flaming horse Aerithyr is one of the main uh, evil gods for the evil factions. Whereas uh, Etheron was a, a god for the good factions, Aerithyr is a god for the evil factions. So we got horses introduced here. We have some more goblins. We have something different where they are coming out with these hands and feet packs. These hands and feet that you can uh, replace onto your figures to give them, you know, a different look. Up until now, the hands have been very simple and they've been very, you know, uh, homogeneous. Like every hand looked the same. It's just a gripping hand, no fists, no open hands, no gesturing hands, anything like that. It's just a, a closed kind of grip hand to hold the weapons. Now they're introducing these hands packs where you can maybe switch out some stuff and uh, do some kit bashing. We have some new sculpting here. We have some new pieces parts. We have some knights and some demon or some uh, goblins and and some demons. Uh, lots of good things in this wave. This wave hasn't come out yet. Even people who pre-ordered it um, when it first was up for pre-order haven't got theirs yet. I've been seeing test shots and prototypes on the internet, so they're not ready to release this 
probably for another couple of months. It was supposed to come out in June, but it obviously got delayed probably for obvious reasons. And then the last thing, and this was very recently, actually, I would say this was the All-Stars 3 wave was introduced and put up for pre-order, I want to say in March or February, like it was, it was pretty recent. And it had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five characters, one of them being a troll, one of the big, huge trolls um, that were re-releases and or reissues of older characters. And then they also snuck in for us two more Masters of the Universe Classics Tributes. Um, we have a She-Ra Tribute and we have a Hordak Tribute. Um, Dorina Ornaris is a She-Ra Tribute and Lord Dracul is a Hordak Tribute. So these were the basically the last, uh, last waves that were released. And this makes up your uh, entirety of the Mythic Legions line. This is basically every, all the pictures that I put up here are every figure that has been released under the Mythic Legion's banner. And it's quite a few figures in about four to five years time. All right, so I'm gonna give my final thoughts and some tips, advice, or suggestions as to how you can get yourself into this great line of figures so first piece of advice I would give is you need to get yourself into the source horseman website get yourself into a source horseman mailing list register yourself so that you will get emails when stuff is updated that way you'll know when there's in stock sales, you'll know when there's special um, releases, and you'll know when the next pre-order happens. You'll know it immediately. Number two, if you collect other lines, you really wanna get into Mythic Legions, you probably need to back off a little bit for the next couple of months. If you collect other lines, let's say you collect Marvel Legends, whatever you're clamoring for, you can get two, three, four, five, six months from now. It's just, just be honest. Marvel Legends don't sell out to the point where you can't get one. It's very rare that that happens with something like that. Number three, be patient. Many people that follow the line, that follow the line closely, are anticipating a new wave or a new something coming up soon, probably another pre-order. That is the best time to get in on Mythic Legions. The best time to get in on Mythic Legions is during a pre-order because you'll be paying regular price for figures. And the pre-order is not like it's only a week long or something like that. They usually give you about one to two months to make your pre-order. So that's plenty enough time to put money aside to buy your figures because you're going to have to pay for them up front. You're not going to pay a portion. You're going to pay all of it. But once you've done that, you're guaranteed to get your figures. That's the best way to do it. Um, and as far as I have seen and or heard, my interpretations is that this is going to happen probably in the near future. I'm talking about within the next month or two, like probably by the end of the summer, early fall, there's probably gonna be another pre-order. So you wanna be able to, if, especially if you're just starting collecting Mythic Legions, you wanna be able to get in on that pre-order when it drops, okay? So that you can get figures for regular price. All right, so my final thoughts on the line. There's a couple of things I wanna go over here. Um, some of which is just my opinions on the actual line itself. And then some others are just, uh, I wanna go over the pros and cons of the line because there are pros and cons. There's a pros and cons to every line of figures you're collecting. 
there's always something that someone can point out or nitpick and say, well, that's not really good or that's not modern or they could do better. That is what it is. So first thing, let's go over the cons. If you look at a typical Mythic Legions figure, there is a lack of articulation. If you're comparing it to other modern toy lines. And there just is. There's there's no way to, you know, try to sugarcoat that or say that, that that's not true or to try to make it like that some type of, you know, blasphemy or or defamation. It's true. The figures have a lack of articulation if you're comparing it to highly articulated figures. Um, that's just the point. Single joints a lot of places, they, they, they sacrifice articulation for sculpt, which is, you know, it's just the opposite of what other companies do. Other companies sacrifice sculpt for articulation. And really it's just a matter of, you know, do you like the figure or not? Do you like the figure enough that its looks and its appeal and its genre or whatever the case trumps its limitations? Second one. Second con. Older figures are hard to find. They just are. Here we have Atlas the Conqueror. Okay. He is a 1.0 figure. He's been released uh, two, I want to say at least two times, two times um, with the original 1.0 release and then he was part of an All-Stars wave. So if you wanted an Atlas the Conqueror, you could probably go on eBay right now and you'd have to pay probably between two, maybe 175 or so and 300 or so to get him which sounds like a lot of money, but there's a lot of other figures going for way more. When I got him, I think I paid maybe like one something. It was under 150, but this was like a year and a half ago, a year ago. So the older figures are hard to find. It just, it is what it is. There's not a whole lot of them floating around and the people that have them and they're selling them, they know that they're valuable. So they're charging a lot of money. And then the price. Just the price in general. If you're not getting in during a in-stock sale or a pre-order, and the Kickstarters, I, I believe, are gonna just not ever be here again. They've made enough money that they, don't probably, they probably don't need Kickstarters anymore. Um, you gotta get in on stuff as early as possible. You gotta get in on stuff when it's released. Just like I said a few minutes ago, if there's a pre-order coming in the next couple of months and you want to get in on the line, that's the time to get in on the line. Like you just got to pony up the money, pay, pay cheap now and get it later rather than paying expensive later and getting it, getting it later. Um, so let's go over the pros. The genre of these figures is a much needed niche being filled. There aren't many companies making medieval, mystical type figures in the six inch to seven inch scale. There just isn't. The only way you're going to be able to get that sort of itch scratched <laughs> is probably Mythic Legions. There's one or two other companies that are trying to break into that genre that I might say that they, you, you could, you know, they might, Mythic Legions may have some competition, but Mythic Legions is four years ahead of them, five years ahead of them. These companies I'm thinking of, they just came out within the last two or three months. So they got a lot of work to do. Quality of the materials. The quality of these figures is spot on. I mean, you're talking about the materials, the paint, the sculpture, the engineering, as far as, yes, I know it's not advanced articulation engineering, but the engineering itself, the figures don't fall apart. Um, 
you're not gonna have huge QC issues like you see with sometimes you watch a figure review and the guy goes to pose the elbow and the elbow falls apart. Mythic Legions is not that. Uh, when you hold these figures in your hand, they're heavy. Like this is a dwarf. This is King Bromden Iron Jaw. He's like a half-sized person, but he's heavy. Like he is, I can feel the weight in my hand when I pick him up. He's solid. So these figures are not going to fall apart or, you know, be ill-constructed, as it were. So, finite number of body parts. Basically, limited uh, parts that they build their figures out of. If you look across the Mythic Legion's line, you will notice that many of the parts of the different figures are reused. They paint them beautifully. They make them look as different as possible. But if in the in the grand scheme of things, many of these parts are reuse. There's reuse all over the place. Okay, that can be seen as a negative. That can be seen as a con. But I choose to see it as a pro. Because Mythic Legions, as I already stated, is made to be a customizable modular line. Something that you can get different figures and make other figures either original ones or reasonable copies or, or representations of existing figures. I'll show you a couple of things as far as customizing goes. This figure here is one of my latest customers. <clears throat> okay, Vok Krell. And he is a made from the base of a Perplore figure. And I'll put a Perplore figure here so that you can see, you know, this, this guy looked completely different when I got him. I personally didn't really have a need for a purple panther or purple orc so i figured you know what i'm gonna take this body and i'm gonna turn it into something that i have floating around in my head and this is what came out but if you put him up against other mythic legions figures he fits he fits in just fine he looks like part of the line and that's the beauty of the reusable parts or the reuse of parts is that it's very easy to make figures using the parts that available and have the figures look like they actually fit with the line. You know, a lot of times people will make customs of different figures, but they don't really look like they fit with the line. It looks like a pure custom figure. The fact that you can make them so that they fit in with everybody with just a little bit of modifications is a selling point, especially for people who like customizing. All right, so in closing, I'd just like to say that I do have plans for these figures. Um, I'm not just a collector, I'm a stop motion animator and I like making stop motions with my figures. And one of the biggest reasons why I collect figures is to put them into stories. All right, hope this was informative, hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and share. Later.